So there's been some pretty big FNAF news as of late. That being for the first time ever, I'm not quite sure, a full FNAF game was leaked and as it turns out, it's real. Recently, a trailer for a Five Nights at Freddy's game based on the short story Into the Pit was leaked, being developed by a studio called Megacat. And while we will be discussing that trailer in some depth, I want to point out that this leak didn't come out of nowhere, as there were two very strong clues pointing us in the direction just a couple days before. The first was the Scholastic uh, thing, not quite sure what it is, but it mentions a bunch of different FNAF books they published, with one of the air bubbles around it mentioning that there would be a game coming soon based on Into the Pit which is the very first short story in the FNAF book series Fazbear Frights. The other was this artwork that seemed to be cropping up, showing the Into the Pit Spring Bonnie in association with the games. Whatever tree had to die for me to get my hands on my copy should be happy it did, because this book is relevant again. So let's talk about Into the Pit. Into the Pit is an oddball of a short story that you can kind of tell was written during an era of FNAF where Scott wasn't really sure where he wanted the story to go. That much is evident within this short story, which is very self-contained aside from one element that gets brought up in later epilogue tales. Oswald is the name of our main character, who is a 10-year-old child about to begin his summer vacation. However, things haven't been all that great for Ozzy here since a job crisis really demolished the town he lives in. When the mill, as it's known, is shut down, his father loses his job and has to pick up work somewhere called the Snack Space. This isn't all that important realistically, but it does help establish that Oswald's town is still struggling. Before school ends, Oswald begins to have this odd fixation on these mechanical animals, drawing them with robotic parts and such. You heard it here first, Oswald may be the world's youngest furry. This goes unexplained until his dad begins to drop him off daily at a place called Jeff's Pizza. Jeff's Pizza is a rundown location that seems like it used to be something else, we'll say. To make a long story short, Oswald gets very bored of just going to Jeff's to eat pizza every day, so he decides to play in a condemned ball pit. He falls back in, but when he emerges, Jeff's pizza is no longer Jeff's pizza. He's traveled seemingly back in time to the year 1985, where Freddy Fazbear and his animatronic friends are singing on stage. While Oswald is here, he makes some new friends, one of whom is named Mike and may in fact be the Michael Afton slash Michael Schmidt of this universe. Which may also be the game universe, but you know what, we're not going to talk about that right now. His friends keep encouraging him to come back as well. It looks like Oswald's daily boredom was solved, since he could just go back in time to this magical version of Jeff's Pizza and leave all his worries behind him. But over time, Oswald begins to notice something strange. Lurking in the background was a mascot character nobody else seemed to see, or at least notice, a yellow rabbit. And this isn't your garden variety, piss bunny. This one is watching Oswald intently. Naturally, like any 10-year-old kid, Oswald ignores this and keeps going back. Haha, the arcade is so fun. But the funny thing about this ball pit is actually not that it's some sort of hot tub time machine. It behaves very strangely such as when Oswald feels guilty about his friends paying for all his food and games, but when he stands up, his pockets are suddenly filled with tokens. The ball pit gave him these tokens. Things only get stranger when Oswald finally asks his dad what happened at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Why is it gone now? This only freaks his dad out, which is important to set up an event in the story that happens shortly after. Oswald returns to the past once again, but things are different. There's no more running and screaming in joy only running and screaming and bloody murder. Speaking of bloody murder, Yellow Bunny Man here decides now is finally a good time to show Oswald just what was going on. He leads Oswald down a dark corridor and presents to him a very disturbing sight. Half a dozen dead kids in the back room. It's worth noting that historically speaking, William Afton, who wore that yellow rabbit suit, has been known to have at minimum six victims. The five missing kids and Charlotte. For some reason or another, the story seemed to either add a sixth victim to the missing children incident, or they just roped in Charlotte for some reason. Hard to say. And I don't know which I actually like worse. As far as we know, it hasn't been relevant since anyway, so we're just gonna keep going. Anyway, six dead kids and Oswald freaks out. Spring Bonnie attempts to attack him, but Oswald is able to make it back to the ball pit and into the present. His dad showed up and started to scold him, but unfortunately, Spring Bonnie managed to follow Oswald into the present, where it attacks and drags his dad into the pit. This next part of the story is honestly the worst part of it. It's just really strange and goofy, but Spring Bonnie um, adopts Oswald for a bit. Like, he drives him home. He sleeps in his dad's bed with his mom. Nobody can seem to tell that this is a big bunny man and not Oswald's dad. And it's not like he speaks, so like, what, did everyone think his dad was just having an episode or something? So Oswald takes this problem into his own hands. 
He goes back to Jeff's and fishes his dad's unconscious body out of the pit. Spring Bonnie attacks, but in the ensuing struggle is tangled in the netting above the pit, where he suffocates and dies. Oswald and his dad leave, and the crazy owner Jeff never gives Oswald his soda. End of the story. It's a pretty good one aside from that one really awkward part right before the end, but it definitely is one of the more beloved Fright stories despite this. But how does that story stack up to the gameplay we've seen of this new, um, interpretation we'll call it? Well, we can start with the trailer. The trailer is actually enough to tell us straight up things will probably be a bit different. I think the first thing we can establish is that this suit here, which appears to be Golden Freddy, is not something that appears in Into the Pit. However, it is possible it appearing here is in reference to another Fright story called The New Kid, where similarly, a kid in a presumably abandoned Freddy's puts on the Golden Freddy costume. That on its own tells us that not everything is as kosher as it is in the original story. On top of that, there was also a website found in connection to this game that tells us a lot more. We'll dig into that a bit later, but for now, I think I want to be upfront about what I think FNAF Into the Pit actually is. I think Into the Pit may be more than just one Fright story. Let me explain. Into the Pit the short story is huge for many reasons. It was the first short story ever written for the FNAF series. It introduced recurring themes such as children main characters, mysterious unexplained monsters, and so, so much more. But one thing it introduced specifically was the ball pit. Although in the books it's left to a little interpretation, the general consensus is that the ball pit is not actually bringing Oswald through time. It's instead creating a sort of pocket dimension that is replaying the events of the past. It's like a tape recording, but you can go in and live it out. This is why things might be a little different from the story we know from the games. It's a retelling. Well, what if we see more than just the events of Into the Pit? One thing I found odd when watching this gameplay footage is that a lot of it takes place during what seems to be night at Freddy's, something that never really happens in the original story. Now, it could be that this is just changing the setting to make things spookier, but what if it's more than that? What if we're seeing other stories bleed into it? This Freddy's at night is of course where the Golden Freddy suit is found. Is it possible that this part of the game takes place in the Freddy's from the new kid? That might sound crazy, but let me continue. One of the locations that we could see on the website was a location called The Mill, which seems to be the mill that closed down in the story. Oswald in the story does not ever go here. It's not an actual set piece for the story really. But if you're able to go here, there has to be a reason why. Why do I think you can go here? I think this is where you might find other stories taking place. You can find Trash of the Gang there, but what if you also found, say, an odd bear robot? Or a lanky porcelain doll looking robot? Or hell, how about just an actual porcelain doll named Ella? As an anniversary title, I wouldn't doubt that all of this is possible. But then there's something else still. When this game actually takes place. Short answer? Good luck. All we can for sure establish is that Oswald goes back in time to 1985 but the actual present day is a lot harder to pin down. Some of our only hints are items that can only exist after certain events have happened, like this poster depicting the toys or baby over here. Trash and the gang are a little ambiguous, technically this could take place before FNAF 6, but I honestly doubt that. It just seems more likely in my opinion for this story to take place after all of that has happened. So I'm predicting it takes place after FNAF 6, but before the events of Help Wanted, since Freddy's isn't really as popular of a brand at this point in time. But that is just going off of the original story, which, as I said, this trailer seems to be deviating from. But now let's talk about that Spring Bonnie because I guarantee you there's some wild stuff to talk about with him. A while back, I talked about Pit Trap in one of my older FNAF character ranking videos. Remember those? I don't. I hardly remember what I ate for breakfast this morning. I think it might have been leftover pizza and coffee. Anyway, this character is first and foremost not William Afton. Case in point, he fucking dies. Outside of that, Pit Trap is also very organic in design, something that seems to even be represented in this trailer. Most obviously is his teeth, as behind his square animatronic teeth are another set of much spikier and sharper needle teeth. This spring bonnie is capable of bleeding as well, and actually never even speaks. Based on the FNAF movie, we know William likes to talk a lot, so this would also be pretty out of character for him. It begs the question, if this thing isn't William, then what is it? And that's something we don't really have a satisfying answer to. The most we can guess is that this particular Spring Bonnie may be a manifestation of agony that was created in the ball pit's pocket dimension, as a sort of demonic version of William. Why it can only be seen by Oswald is still sort of a mystery, but hey, that's what I got. Oh, and at the end of this trailer, we see that he has these big blue ring eyes, which I feel I should mention, don't actually come from the book. 
This design element originates in the doco Into the Pit music video, which I'm pretty sure makes this the second time in FNAF history that music video's pit trap has been spotted in official FNAF media. Where was I? Oh yeah, the main point I'm making is that this game seems to be really all about him. Which isn't surprising, but if I'm right about this being a retelling of multiple Fright stories, I feel like there's going to be more to this guy too. What exactly that is yet, I'm not entirely sure. My guess is that this game will clarify his origins to some extent, whether that be outright confirming he is an agony demon, or maybe just saying it's William after visiting Baraka's dentist. Now how about that Steam page? Although this was hidden, multiple screenshots of the game were recovered depicting numerous locations from the game. The first one I want to call attention to is the bedroom, which actually kind of looks like the FNAF 4 bedroom. I'll be real, with this being an anniversary title, I think that the small similarities are just meant to be there as easter eggs or references. Most notably this Freddy plush on the bed which sort of looks like a Freddle. He does have the same toy robot and worm thing though, so that's cool. And a Godzilla poster. Like, that's just straight up Godzilla. Next are these two images in what appears to be a dining room at two different times a day. In one, Pit Trap seems to be chasing Oswald, and in the other, he sat at the table. I think this does confirm that we will be seeing the part of the story where Pit Trap adopts Oswald adapted into this game. The mechanics are not really apparent yet, if there are mechanics at all. This could be a scripted chase scene, but if I had to guess, Pit Trap will just be a background character during the day, but at night he'll become aggressive if he catches you sneaking around the house. These next two are interesting ones, both taking place in Freddy's and depicting Oswald being attacked by Bonnie, who is hiding under a table, and Chica, whose feathers have seen much better days. I bring this up because I believe this is confirmation that Pit Trap will not be the only threat in the game. You'll likely have to avoid at least these two as well. And to reiterate the chasing mechanic, we get a screenshot of Pit Trap chasing Oswald through the arcade. I think one of these cabinets is displaying Midnight Motorist, but it doesn't resemble the actual cabinet seen in Pizza Sim, so who's to say? The mill is also here, but one thing I didn't mention is that Bonnie's guitar is also here. It makes me think that maybe Oswald goes to the mill to get that guitar and bring it back to Freddy's. But hey, that's just a theory. I miss MatPat already. There's another screenshot taking place inside the school. I imagine this is probably in the beginning of the game where Oswald begins drawing strange pictures. The next one I feel confirms what I said before to some degree, that being that this game will likely be a mashup of several Fright stories using Into the Pit as the overarching narrative. This screenshot depicts Oswald in what appears to be in a parts and service room, with a one-armed Freddy with a seemingly open chest. He's also missing the fur coating on one of his feet. Inside his chest appears to be a set of spring locks similar to how they appeared in the FNAF movie, which makes me think that this is a much older Freddy who may be an enemy character. Hard to say right off the bat. However, I want to direct your attention to the shelf behind Oswald. There's a lot of animatronic parts and heads, but something specific that caught my eye was this little guy next to the Bonnie head. This right here is Yarg Foxy, and it's a plush that is sort of the catalyst for the plot of Lonely Freddy. It appearing here may just be an easter egg, but I'd also be very pleased to see if there's other, larger connections to that story. The big story though, and the one I feel sort of 50-50 on, is the Stitch Wraith Stingers. The Stitch Wraith Singers were epilogues to each book in the series which formed the overarching narrative surrounding Eleanor, Afton, and Agony, as well as a protagonist in the form of the Stitch Wraith. The thing about the Stingers is that they tended to tie everything together. Many Fright stories connect directly to the Stingers, including Into the Pit. This sequence of events, known as the Stitch Line, is the sort of grander story of Fazbear Frights. So the question is, will we see this realized in Into the Pit? I'm gonna have to say I doubt it. Or at least, I doubt it'll be a focal point. I can imagine this game having an epilogue with the Stitch Wraith, or maybe a small cameo somewhere, but I don't think it'll be elaborated on outside of that, at least not right away. One of the most exciting prospects of this game being made is it opens the floodgates of possibility for a lot of Frights games to be made. Or even Tales games, imagine if we actually got to play out the original Mimic story, or Hide and Seek, just to name two I think would translate really well into this style. I really can't tell you enough how exciting it is to talk about a new FNAF release and not know a damn thing about what could actually be coming. My guesses are just guesses based on what I do know of the series, and how I would write the story if I could. Will I be right? Will I be wrong? I guess we'll just have to find out. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe, and check out some of my other videos, like this one where I talk about Steamboat Willie, or this one where I ramble about Venom. Until then, I'm Demuted. Peace.